This week on The Watchman, welcome to Kurdistan. We are in northern Iraq, in one of the most pivotal regions in the entire Middle East. For years, the Kurds have stood bravely on the front lines against the likes of Saddam Hussein and ISIS. This is a beacon for moderation and tolerance that can serve as a model for the broader Muslim Middle East. And talk about a dangerous neighborhood. The Kurds are bordered by Iran, Turkey, Syria, and Iraqi forces, yet they are pro-America, pro-freedom, and today you will learn the inside story of this ancient and proud people and why what happens here in Kurdistan matters to you, no matter where you live. So join us today as we go deep inside Iraqi Kurdistan, only right here on The Watchman. Dalton, I'm so glad to finally be here with you in Erbil, northern Iraq, Iraqi Kurdistan. For months we've been talking about it, you made it happen, now we're here. This place is near and dear to your heart. Tell us why you are so connected to Iraqi Kurdistan. Well, for us, the personal journey started in Turkey, actually. We moved to Turkey back in when we started FAI, which is our little spiritual family. Frontier Alliance International, great organization that we featured here before on the show. Yeah, in fact, in, uh, in Israel, in the Golan, when we were working That's in right. Syria. And uh, we moved to Turkey because the Syrian war had started. And we moved into a neighborhood accidentally that was a Kurdish neighborhood. And we started hearing the Kurdish story, the Kurdish narrative, hearing the hearts and the minds of Kurds, and we instantly fell in love with them. And just so people know, the work you're doing at FAI, you're going into war zones, into hot spots, and you're providing incredible humanitarian work. Yeah, we believe very much in creative access and that to tether together relief and humanitarian aid with the faithful representation of the gospel, to Amen. be both hands and feet and the message of the gospel itself, to display it among the nations. And the main emphasis for us really is this is how we're blessing Israel and standing with Israel because yeah by engaging Israel's enemies with mercy, we're actually, as Paul said, we're actually blessing and standing with Israel. So this is our way of showing solidarity to Israel is engaging Israel's enemies with the message of Israel's Messiah. The good news is that the Kurds are not an enemy of Israel. We'll talk about that yeah. in a bit. But you formed this connection with the Kurdish people through your work, and all of a sudden you and your family end up here in Iraqi Kurdistan. How did that all play out? Well, we watched, uh, as Obama called them, the JV jihadis take Fallujah. ISIS, of and course. And we watched Fallujah fall, and as soon as Fallujah fell, which is a place that there was a lot of blood and uh, money, and there was a lot spent there to, to secure Fallujah during the surge years and the Anbar years. U.S. soldiers. When that fell, we knew that something significant was about to happen. They weren't no JV squad. Yeah. So we recalibrated, because we were prioritizing Syria and Turkey at the time. And then we came here when Mosul fell. And we jumped in with the Kurdish forces providing medical care, emergency medical care for the Peshmerga. Now the Peshmerga, the Kurdish yeah. military forces. And we jumped in with them, moved into, we moved to the Iranian border, right on the Iranian border where we'll be going the next few days. Yeah. And uh, we, be, they accepted us as family and we just became home. So I've got my wife and I have four boys and uh, for a number of years during the ISIS years we lived here and uh, Kurdistan became home to us. Yeah. When we came here we realized that the Kurdish forces were really the key to all of these territories because they hold the keys, they're the security forces. Yeah. And so we realized that the best way to actually engage the civilian population on the Turkish, Iranian, Syrian, Iraqi border 
was to coordinate and work with the Peshmerga forces. Yeah. And we discovered in the process that the Kurdish military forces are aggressively pro-United States, aggressively pro-Israel, aggressively pro-religious liberty, aggressively pro-ethnic freedom, meaning they don't, they're, they're not a, a racist genocidal army yeah. like many of the armies in the Middle East. And this is here in the middle of the Muslim Middle East. We have this great force for moderation right here in Iraqi Kurdistan. Pretty amazing. And the thing is, Kurdistan, a lot of people don't, you say Kurdistan, they go, where, I can't find it on the map. Yeah. Where is it, you know? Uh, and the reason why is because Kurdistan, the best way that I know how to explain Kurdistan, what it is, is it's a pre-state inside of a failed state, Iraq. Iraq surrounded by rogue jihadi states. We're gonna talk more about the geopolitical strategic situation here and why the Kurds are such an invaluable ally for the United States right here in the heart of the Middle East. But we have to mention where we are right now. Yeah. This is a fascinating place. Set the scene for us. So right now we're in the old city, the Citadel, right in the heart of Erbil. Now the crazy thing about this place is, as you can see, it, it looks pretty old. It's and it just, is pretty old. <laughs> it's not just pretty old. This is the oldest inhabitable city in the world. Meaning, there's no other city that, that some come close like Damascus, but there's no other city in the world yeah. that there's a record of a population living inside of this city longer than this one right here that we're walking in right here. So some 7,000 to 8,000 years old by some accounts, yeah. people were living right here. And again, folks, this is Erbil. This is the capital uh, of Iraqi Kurdistan, but it's an amazing place. And you see the visuals there of the overlook here uh, from the Citadel. Uh, and this has become a real tourist hotspot. And we see Kurds everywhere taking selfies. Pretty cool to see. The crazy thing about Erbil, this is what's crazy. People go, oh, and you probably heard this when you were getting on a plane to come here and say, oh, you're going to Iraq, it's yes. so dangerous. Erbil, this is one of the top five safest cities in the world. Wait, please repeat that for us. Our bill, so we're walking right now, which is yeah. in Iraq, technically, yeah. is classified in terms of statistically one of the five most safest cities in the world in terms of statistics. Wow. Which is mind blowing when you think yeah. the, neighborhood the neighborhood that we're in. But I can attest to it. Living here, you know, raising kids here, this is, uh, you know, think about it. A U.S. service member, or even an Israeli service member, could walk the streets of this place and people will come out of the shops, shake your hand and say thank you. Yes. They'll hug you, they'll kiss you, they love the United States, they love Israel. Yeah. It's a Muslim country. The U.S.-Kurdish relationship, the cooperation against ISIS, and we're going to talk about that more coming up, but the cooperation against ISIS, against Saddam Hussein, take it back about 25 years. Yeah. The Kurds have been a steadfast and loyal ally of the United States for many, many years. Yeah, this is the bottom line. Kurdistan is the Iraq that we dreamed of in 2003. When we deposed Saddam Hussein, we had this envision of religious liberty that was all of these things. You go down and you look at Iraq today. Iraq is none of those things. Iraq today is Iran. Kurdistan is everything that we fought and bled and died and believed in 2003. Yeah, take us through the history of this proud people a little bit that goes back thousands of years here in the region and that also has a biblical connection. Profound biblical connection. And you know, the question is where do you start? There's so much, but yeah. you know, let's, let's take uh, Assyrian and Babylonian invasion. You know, the, the Jewish people are, uh, their lands invaded and violated and they're deported. Where are they deported to? Here. Here. So the, the indigenous people of this land became the custodians in many ways of Jewish presence in their midst. And you can meet Kurds today who will talk about before 1948 how there was still Jewish presence here and how they believe it is their responsibility to care for the Jews who were still in exile in their midst, who then went back in 1948. Now think of that, what other country in the Middle East thinks and talks that way? Yeah, who's actually reminisce, has fond reminiscences of the Jewish presence here and would like to see it return. And I think it's because God's hand is on this people in a profound way. Uh, you know, th this, is, this is profound. You know, we talk about the wise men who came, you know, to, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem. But where did the wise men come from? They came from here. And if you talk to the Kurds today, the Kurds just assume it. It's just, yeah, the wise men, they were Kurds. So think about this, potentially the first people to acknowledge the divinity of baby Jesus in Bethlehem who traveled to the land of Israel were more than likely were Kurds. 
Now, go to Pentecost, Acts 2. There's a list in Acts 2. It says that all of these peoples gathered in Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. They gathered there, and who's the first people mentioned? But the, the biblical term for the Kurds. So the Kurds are the first people to recognize the divinity of baby Jesus, and they're also the first people mentioned in the book of Acts who were present at a Jewish feast in Jerusalem on Pentecost after Jesus was, was crucified and rose from the dead. And I think the Kurds have a history and a destiny of being at the forefront of God's purposes. And I think that's what we're at the, on the cusp of now is another season of the Kurds being harbingers of God's providential purposes in the Middle East. Yeah, there's clearly something stirring here and it's a proud people that, look, has been oppressed. They can share that with the Jewish people as well. There's been a history of uh, oppression and tyranny against the Kurdish people here in the region. Yeah. But like Israel in many ways, the Kurdish people are standing strong. Yep. They're here today. They're thriving through Saddam, through ISIS, through go back to ancient oppressors thousands of years ago, yep. yet the Kurds are still here. And I think it tells you something, Dalton, about the character and the spirit of the people yep. that they are so close uh, to America, that they do have such a fond view of Israel. Interestingly, the Arabs call the Kurds the other Jews and they call Kurdistan the other Israel. Now they mean it in a derogatory way, but for us, we consider that a compliment, I would say. Totally, and now the thing is, those of us who stand with and love the state of Israel and the Jewish people, I believe there's no better way over the next decade to show our love and solidarity with the Jewish people in the state of Israel than standing with this people and this pre-state that's not yet a state that I believe deserves to be a state. Yeah. And you can see it, it's coming alive. And this is a place that deserves our support. Yeah. We talk a lot here on the show about Israel being the front line of defense for the West, but the Kurdish people are the front lines of that front line yeah. here in the belly of the beast in the Middle East. But hey, we're gonna be talking a lot about what's going on here today. And as people can see, it's bustling, it's alive here in Iraqi Kurdistan. We'll talk more about the past and we'll talk about the future of this incredible people and this incredible region with you. Dalton, thank you so much, my friend. Glad you're much here, more. Brother. Oh, I'm glad. It wouldn't have happened without you, my friend, and the great work of Frontier Alliance International. We'll have much more coming up from here in Erbil after the break. Don't move. Christian support for Israel starts with the Bible. Kufai's ebook, Why Christians Should Support Israel, will lay out seven biblical reasons why it's important to love and bless Israel. Starting with the Bible, learn why Christians are indebted to Israel and the Jewish people for our Christian faith. Discover why Israel has a biblical and historic claim to the land. And see why modern Israel matters to God, to Christians, and to the world. This free ebook is an invaluable resource for you, unpacking the biblical foundation of Christian Zionism and how you as a Christian can defend and bless Israel. Visit www.kufi.org slash ebook to receive your free ebook today and join Kufi to add your voice to a movement of over 8 million Christians speaking out for Zion's sake. And welcome back to The Watchman. We are heading back to northern Iraq right now for our interview with the governor of Erbil as we learn more about this strategically important region called Iraqi Kurdistan. Well, Governor, thanks so much for joining us today. It's my first time in Kurdistan, and I'm very excited to be here. It is a pleasure to have you. Now, tell us why Kurdistan is such uh, a pivotal country here in the region, in the Middle East, and for the world. The Kurdistan region became a very important model in the Middle East after 1991 in terms of democracy and coexistence. It's been very important, especially in the Middle East, where there is all these conflicts between different religions and nationalities. Kurdistan became a safe place and a place where there is peace and coexistence for everyone. Governor, the United States and the people of Kurdistan have had a very special relationship, I would say, over the years. Talk about that close cooperation against the likes of ISIS, for instance, and how the Kurds and the U.S. have been such strong allies. In 2003, when America was trying to change the Saddam Hussein regime in Iraq, Kurdistan region and the Peshmerga forces were a great partner of the coalition and the United States. 
and this relationship increased and developed until 2014, when the Kurdish Peshmerga and the Kurdistan region were the first line of defense for the international community against ISIS. And because we believe in the concept of coexistence in the region, we tried to stop the terrorists, and we did. This further developed our cooperation with the United States and the coalition. Kurdistan has always been a safe place for thousands of displaced persons and refugees from other countries where they are under attack from the ISIS threat. Governor, you mentioned the Peshmerga, uh, and, and I know people in America have great respect for the Peshmerga, the brave men and women uh, in the Peshmerga. Uh, tell us about the status, I guess you would say, of ISIS right now. The Peshmerga did just brave fighting on the ground against ISIS. Uh, ISIS has largely been crushed here in the region, but they still remain a threat. Uh, what's the situation right now with the ISIS threat here? The Kurdish Peshmerga men and women defeated ISIS on the ground. But ISIS is also an idea, so we have to defeat this idea. They are not holding ground here any longer, but they still exist. The Kurdish people never wanted to be a part of this radical ideology, and we fought to keep it away from our region. Governor, you live in a very tough neighborhood here, but you continue to have a great relationship with the United States, and you stand against the forces of radicalism. For people at home who might not know a lot about Kurdistan, what's a message you want to give to every American watching and to every Christian watching? The Kurdistan region is in a very tough neighborhood. There are countries surrounding us that are having problems. There are 14 centuries of problems between Sunni and Shia. There are countries like Turkey and Iran, and they have their own interests in the region. So it has never been easy to keep this region safe with all the troubles in the area. My message for all the Christians around the world, especially for those who fled Iraq and are living abroad now, is we ask them to come back and continue their lives in peace with their own culture and history. We have protected Christian monasteries in the mountains here for 2,000 years. Thanks again to Governor Hadi for joining us and to the Kurdistan regional government for being such gracious hosts throughout our trip. Well, coming up after the break, did you know that up to 200,000 Jews of Kurdish background live right here in Israel? Folks, this is an amazing story. Find out more after the break. Join Christians United for Israel on Capitol Hill, June 28th through 30th to do your part in ensuring the relationship between the United States and Israel remains stronger than ever. Right now, Israel faces many enemies that seek her destruction. As anti-Semitism continues to surge at an alarming rate around the world, Christians have a moral imperative to stand with Israel. In just over a decade, Kufi has played a leading role in efforts to curb Iran's nuclear ambitions, hinder Hezbollah and Hamas's war of terror against Israel. Israel and fight against the anti-Semitic BDS movement. As watchmen on behalf of Israel and the Jewish people, Kufi needs your help to ensure that Israel and her people continue to be strong and safe. Join us in Washington on June 28th through 30th to remind your elected officials that America's Christians stand with Israel. With over 8 million members, Christians United for Israel is the largest pro-Israel voice in America. Add yours today by registering for the 2020 Washington Summit. And welcome back to The Watchmen. We are taking you this week inside a very special region called Iraqi Kurdistan. But it's fitting that I'm in Jerusalem right now because Kurdish Jews have a special link to this city. In fact, tens of thousands of Kurdish Jews live right here in God's holy city. Dr. Mordecai Zaken is an expert on the history of the Jews in Iraqi Kurdistan, and he joined us recently to share their incredible story. Take a look. Well, Moti, thanks so much for joining us today. Pleasure. You are the perfect man to have on with us here on The Watchman because so much is going on with the Kurds right now, especially in Syria. Okay, let's start with a little bit of the history of the Kurdish people. Who are they and where are they based? Well, uh, today, the Kurdish people, uh, and this is one of their tragedies, that they are divided among five countries. Four in the Middle East, which means in Turkey, in Iraq, in Syria, and in Iran, and one in the former Soviet Union, basically in Armenia, 
in Azerbaijan, in uh, Tajikistan, yeah. in the Islamic uh, countries. So you have uh, the main problem of the Kurds, which are a tribal society, tribes that have been living in the area for hundreds of years, that they have been suppressed and oppressed by all the regimes in which boundaries they live. We once had, it may shock some people to know, a large Jewish population in Iraqi Kurdistan. Tell us a little bit about the history. Shouldn't be that much of a surprise to people, actually, if you read your Bible. Uh, Babylon, Persia, there was a Jewish presence, obviously, in those lands. But tell us a little bit about the history of the Jewish people in the Kurdish regions. Yes, as you uh, rightly pointed out, the Jews uh, were exiled from Samaria and from uh, Israel uh, during the 7th century uh, before uh, Christ into uh, the area which is approximately in Assyria, in uh, current uh, Kurdistan. Yeah. And they settled there. Uh, I guess that uh, the Kurdish Jews believe that they are the exiles from Assyria. They live there for lost tribes. The, the lost tribes. Yeah, the ten lost tribes. Maybe yes. they... They, they were the subject, the fascinating subject of many, many uh, travelers who were looking for them. But the Jews and the Assyrians of Kurdistan still spoke the language, the Aramaic language, and, and they were the minorities in this area with the Muslim Kurds who, who were the majority. So we have, we have had hundreds of small communities of Jews in Iraq, in Turkey, in Syria, and Iran, up until the in establishment Muslim lands. in Muslim land, up until the establishment of the State of Israel, up until uh, approximately the 20th century. Wow. So, uh, and then most of the people, the overwhelming majority of the people, left and came to Israel. They live here mostly in Jerusalem, but also in many agricultural villages. Uh, and uh, a large Kurdish population here in Israel. Yes, it's, it is pretty large. People say now, by now, about 200,000 people. And Moti, you have Kurdish ancestry in your own family, right? That's, that's right, yes. Uh, I am from a Kurdish origin, my father and my mother, uh, and my grandfather's uh, side. And uh, so I am curious about this. Uh, I was very curious about this society. As I told you, I started writing. Yeah. Uh, You've written great books about this. Thank you. I wrote, I began with the term paper about Kurdistan when I was a student and I realized there was nothing, hardly anything in written. So I start interviewing people just like you were doing it and you know how fascinating it is. Yeah. When I was in Kurdistan, a lot of the Peshmerga generals I interviewed spoke very fondly of Israel. Tell us about that special relationship between the Kurds and Israel. Yes, you're right, Eric. The Israel actually helped the Kurds but of Iraq, and not all the Kurds of Iraq, but the Kurds of the KDP, of the Kurdish, uh, Kurdistan uh, Democratic Party, there's still a lot of good memories and sympathy between the Kurdish people and the Israeli people. And uh, now when the, in the KRG, the Kurdish regional government was created, there is uh, some sort of contact that I cannot discuss uh, yeah. in details, but you understand the sympathy is there, the mutual sympathy, the mutual empathy between this, and there's similarity. Yeah. And the Kurds, they say to themselves, if Israel managed to have independent state in an area surrounded by so many enemies, enemies. why can't we, the Kurds, succeed, just like Israel, to have our independent state even though we are surrounded by enemies. Yeah. That's a model for, for a role model for the Kurds. Up next, my final thoughts on why you should care about the Kurds. Don't move. Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran, ISIS. The same terrorist forces that seek to annihilate Israel have a bullseye on the back of the United States. At Christians United for Israel, we know that Israel's enemies and America's are one and the same. When Israel comes under attack, our nationwide network of over 7 million members leaps into action. We help lead the fights on Capitol Hill to pull out of the disastrous Iran nuclear deal, to move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, and to cut funding to the Palestinian Authority over its use of American taxpayer dollars to fund terrorism. When Kufai speaks, Washington listens.
and as radical forces threaten Israel and America, we need your help. To support the important work of Christians United for Israel, visit kufi.org slash give or call the phone number on your screen. When you defend Israel, you're defending America. So join our movement today. And welcome back to Jerusalem. We had an incredible time filming recently a few countries over from here in Iraqi Kurdistan. It's a land rich in biblical history. Think of the Assyrian, Babylonian, and Persian empires. That was their neighborhood. Think of the prophets Nahum, Jonah, and Daniel. They all spent time in ancient Iraq. A good portion of your Old Testament after the Babylonian destruction of Jerusalem unfolded in that region. So there's history but there's also strategic importance. Whether it's been communism, Saddam Hussein, ISIS, or now Iran and its Iraqi Shia militias, the Kurdish Peshmerga have been the front line of defense against these radical anti-Western forces. It's not easy to find a region in the Muslim Middle East that is pro-America, pro-freedom, and friendly to Israel, but we've got it in Iraqi Kurdistan. It's a crucial region that you need to keep in your prayers. Our team at Kufi stands with the Kurds as they fight the good fight against the radical forces that are pressing them on all sides. You see the information there on your screen. Call or click and join our movement today. Make a difference for such a time as this. Until next time, from Jerusalem, God bless you. And remember, never Hold your peace.